Hi there, so this is my project overview and screen record. So essentially what I wanted to go over with you is what does and doesn't work. So first things first, let's talk about uh, my Docker. Uh, so first things first, you can build a Docker. I have it set up uh, that it comes from Maven uh, using JDK 8. Um, it copies everything over where it needs to go and then it runs a clean install of Maven um, and then it will execute the main class, which is my GUI, which I will go over a little bit later during the code review. Um, and then what should work is this, I run a Docker run command. I set my display variable equal to the IP value, which I get by running if config en zero, um, or you can go into system preferences and I found it in there, it's the exact same thing. Try to set it in there as my display variable. Um, give it the X11 uh, information. And then I set an environmental variable for my Google application credentials, which uh, are on my desktop. So I put that path in there and then whatever you called it during your build. Um, for me, it just, so it runs, it like tries to run the Maven, uh, everything scans for the project, installs everything that it needs to do. Um, and then sadly it gets a build failure because of the fact that it doesn't think that my X11 is uh, that that IP address is correct uh, for my display variable, um, which is weird because I have it set up with exports here. So, and it is running, you can see that up there at the top and everything. Um, I did try to get the IP address through its terminal and it gave me the exact same one. Um, but sadly we get down here and it says build failure. As you can see, can't connect with the IP address that I gave it. Um, once it gets the right IP address, I'm sure that it'll work. Um, we can look at my uh, Docker file here, um, which I'm sure you can see in my GitHub repository then, but it's pretty simple. Um, after the Docker, that's really sad that it doesn't work, but uh, moving on, you can see uh, I have my cluster set up, uh, no jobs currently, but uh, my jar file, inside of the jar folder, inside of the bucket. So I have that, uh, all data is like all of the um, files uh, from the data file that you gave us with a project, uh, broken up with no subdirectories so that it uh, is easy to do. And then I have the development data for each of the three folders themselves separated uh, in here in the bucket. So yeah, and as you can see, there's no output folder here because we haven't run a job. Um, moving on, this is my GUI application. Uh, when we run it, it comes out here and it gives me the GUI with these four options. You can choose any of the buttons, but we'll choose the first option, which is running it on Hugo. Um, if we go back to my cluster, we can see this. Uh, back in the jobs, you can see that it created a job and it's running. Usually uh, this one takes about like uh, 30 to 38 seconds is what I've been seeing. Um, but while it's doing that, we can go in here and see that it creates the output folder as it's supposed to do. Um, and once this is done running, it should say success over here. So we can go in and take a look. While it's doing, it's map reducing, and we see we get a successful output. Um, we come back out here, we go into output. We can see that it gets all the files. For some reason, it's not uh, returning back here. It just gets stuck on trying to get the output folder, uh, which we can go over where it's getting stuck in the code then uh, when we do the code review. But just to show you that this is working, I will follow your instructions from the description and go ahead and merge these for you so you can see that my output is working correctly. So if we get the merge, copy from local, and then go ahead and copy it over. we can see inside of our folder here that it copies it into an output.txt, which I can open up here so that we can see it. 
So opening it in nano, you can see that it gets the right data, it has the word, uh, followed by the number of times that it shows up in the file. Uh, so for example, we have this but, we get uh, but shows up 83 times uh, inside of our Hugo folder and 17 times in the Notre Dame de Paris text and uh, miserables, ooh, it shows up inside of there 16 times, 66 times, sorry. So that shows you that we get the right answer um, with that. So without further ado, we can start our code review. So first things first, we can go over the working code, which is the inverted index. In here, I have my main uh, method, which create, which has the job creation here, uh, sets the input paths, output paths, and everything like that. Um, then we have the mapper, which is uh, taking the word and the document ID, which are both text. I changed that from uh, the int writable to a text field, um, which allows us to Go ahead and write that uh, doc ID into a string, tokenize it, and then uh, write those out as the word and the document ID. And then coming down here, uh, we look at our extension of reducer, which uh, we changed because our now that it's text in text, uh, we change our input and our output key value pairs here to text text, and then our output is text text as well. Um, how this works is I create a hash map uh, every time it goes through it is hashing that value and putting it in here and then adding one to the total number of times that that word shows up or that key shows up um, and then we write that to our uh, our context here which our key is still our word which is passed in and then um, table text is something I create here so it gets the total number of times that word shows up, which we've been calculating throughout this uh, loop, and then adds it to the hash map result for that string, and then uh, puts it in here. So moving on, uh, I have my own personal GUI application running in Eclipse here with uh, the Maven inside of a Maven project. And so here's my POM file. It gets the dependencies, the Google Cloud, and the data proc one and the storage um, so that should be all good and which works out I put uh, all my import statements that we need for in here up here at the top um, and then underneath inside of here we have um, our GUI itself so I create an action listener on it um, do some simple like prints make sure everything's working and then have like the normal Java swing so J panel J label J button that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm adding the action listeners to them, um, which I define that listener class down here uh, by overriding action listener. Well, uh, yeah, overriding action listener. Uh, so when they click on it, uh, I'm checking which button they clicked, and then doing the correct submit job uh, method, which is written down here below. Uh, so if we look down here, it submits Hugo, submits Shakespeare, submit. Uh, submits Tolstoy or uh, submits all of them uh, and they each have their own the jar specified here um, what data they're doing so all data or uh, Tolstoy data and then they all output to this uh, output folder inside of our bucket um, which we saw was working uh, once it does that it comes down here and it tries it gets the data so it sets a variable to a string a string variable here and to, to equal to the null which will change if it gets the data um, and then while it's true just because uh, you have to have that and I have it sleep if it's not in there yet just in case while it's running the job it's not trying to pull it uh, and then once the file is there it should go it should go down here to our get output data which uh, it does go down in here and it uh, outputs trying to get the file to just the command prompt um, and then it gets my credentials so that's the uh, bucket name and then the file name which is out the output.txt obviously um, and then it tries to merge them all together and put them into a byte array which we then change into our string array uh, sorry into our string which then comes back up here and then our uh, method add to GUI uh, would add that string 
into a text area, uh, which I clear out our frame, our original frame, add it to a text area, and then uh, create a scroll uh, a scroll pane out of it, which uh, allows us to go up, right, left, uh, so that in case the data is bigger than the window, and then um, add that back to our frame. Um, sadly, all that work, all that I got working was it uh, submits it, creates the job, and it gets stuck here, which uh, means it's throwing some sort of exception. I tried to fill around with it, tried a bunch of couple different ways, and I couldn't get it working. Um, but yeah, that's how everything works. Um, if you, I will uh, put more information on of the GitHub repository as to what is and isn't working with more detail. Uh, thanks so much.